In the opening scene, we see a young Sarah Fisher wishing upon a beautiful love story. Although she may have been a princess growing up, we're taken to the future where we see an organized businesswoman, so much so, that some may suggest that she has OCD. Waking up at an exact time every morning, she works out before getting ready for the day. Before grabbing her usual long-named coffee, she heads to the dry cleaners to get her clothes cleaned. The poor workers see her coming, so they all hide behind the counter contemplating who should help Sarah. One of them steps up, and she soon regrets it, as Sarah starts going into the specifics of how she wants her clothes made. Finally, she gets to the coffee shop, and the barista greets her already knowing she will order a non-fat half-calf latte. Like, what does that even mean? Regardless, she grabs her order and heads to the offices where she works as an HR. After interviewing some potential employees, she ends her day with a guy she's been going out with, but that's about to go south faster than she thinks. Trusting her intuition, she asks to get to know him better, because she feels she doesn't know anything about him, even though they've been going out for a while. The guy admits that he's afraid he'll leave him if she were to know the real him, but she encourages him to open up. He reveals that he smokes three packs a day, but she tries to go over it. Not only that, he orders a glass of whiskey, even though she knows that he doesn't drink. What tips the boat, however, is when Sarah sneezes, and he pulls out a napkin from his pocket, but a credit card falls into her bowl of soup. Looking closely, she realizes that it's her card, so he's forced to admit that he's a kleptomaniac. Upset, and rightfully so, Sarah heads to her sisters to rant about her disappointment in men. She can't believe how bizarre men have become, and even worries that there are no normal guys left. Chloe isn't worried as she's sure Sarah will find someone. However, Sarah is convinced that she won't ever find a guy she can start a family. To lighten up the mood, her sister Chloe jokingly assumes that she'll need to make a list to find the one. Surprisingly, Sarah ends up loving the idea. Same as her schedule, which works perfectly in her eyes, she will write a list of what she likes and dislikes, in hopes that it will lead her to the perfect man. Returning home, Sarah gets to make the list right away. She puts up some traditional values, such as the guy has to love his family and have a career. However, she ends up adding some specific requirements the more men she goes out with. The list is perfect in Sarah's eyes, but her sister Chloe seems concerned. The days go by and everything seems to be going for well Sarah until something changes in her list. Returning from her usual morning run, she heads to the coffee shop to get the usual. However, upon entering the cafe, she sees a new barista who seems to give her the ick right away. He makes the woman in front of Sarah try a new drink, as he believes that she would love it. The woman ends up liking it. But what ticks Sarah off is how confident he is, which actually makes him a bit arrogant. It's Sarah's turn to order, but when she tries to speak, she gets interrupted by the barista playing the harmonica for her. Finishing his performance, he lets her know that he's Fred, the new owner. Sarah tries to be positive, but when trying to order her usual drink, he refuses to make it for her. The reason? He doesn't think her vibe matches her drink choice and would rather make her what he thinks would suit her. Confused, she tries ordering the usual again, but he lets her know that she will drink what he makes her, or she won't drink at all. Flabbergasted, she turns around to leave but ends up bumping into an attractive guy. He apologizes, and she apologizes as well, which gets them to engage in a conversation that eventually leads to them having coffee. Eric brings the coffee to their table, and he thinks Fred's weird as well. From the moment he sits down, they start talking about everything and get lost in time. He reveals that he's a surgeon, which checks some fields in Sarah's list. Funny enough, they get interrupted by Fred, who seems to be annoyed at how much they have in common. However, some time passes, and they get to the topic of their family. As Sarah shows Eric pictures of her family, Fred decides to join them. They realize that they've been talking for three hours, but Eric has to leave as he works at the animal shelter on Saturdays. Ticking another box in the list, Sarah can't wait to get home and put him on the board. Before leaving, he invites her on a proper date, and she happily agrees. Stepping out, she sees Fred by the entrance playing the harmonica, making him even more irritating. A woman happens to be walking her dog, and the dog tries to sniff Fred, which only freaks him out. Sarah assumes that he doesn't like animals, but he reveals that a dog had bitten him when he was a child, and that his reaction was just trauma. Getting into work, Sarah is surprised by a large bouquet on her work desk. She reads the note, and it's from Eric, inviting her to dinner at his house. Not missing the opportunity, she gets ready, and pulls up to his house in the evening. As if he couldn't have been any more perfect, he welcomes her with his dog Shakespeare by his side. The night only gets better for Sarah as they begin with a home-cooked dinner that Eric makes. 
Not only is it the food she would prepare for herself, but she also finds out that he doesn't like red meat like her. By the end of the date, they watch a sad movie. The icing on the cake? Eric cries during the movie, which only leads to them sharing a passionate kiss. Another box ticked. She tells her sister all about it the following morning, but Chloe isn't sure about perfect Eric. As per usual, Sarah gets to the coffee shop demanding the coffee she usually drinks. Not only that, she sees Fred giving the guy in front of her the exact order she wants, but she asks for it, and he refuses to give her the order. His excuse is that the guy has the right vibe for the boring coffee, but she doesn't. She threatens to never come back again before storming off to the coffee shop down the street, only to see that it's closed. Returning, she asks for any kind of coffee, so he gets to work. Despite being pissed off, she admires his talent and passion when it comes to coffee making. He puts the cup in front of her and lets her know that it's sweet and sour, just like him. Before she can take a sip, he asks whether she's waiting for Eric. Not only is she waiting for him, but she also reveals that she really likes him. Fred doesn't seem to like the fact that she likes him so much, so he decides to stir the pot. He tells her a story about an old coffee machine and how it got replaced. The new one, although attractive and shiny, had produced the same tasting coffee as the old one, meaning that he was referring to Eric. Taking it personally, Sarah puts the cup down and decides to leave without trying his special coffee. At home, she goes over the list and realizes that Eric ticks all the good boxes. However, it gets her thinking, so she decides to bring it up first thing in the morning. Fred tries to sweep it under the rug, but she's not letting go, as she realizes that he only tried getting under her skin with his snarky comment. Fred tries to convince her otherwise by claiming that he's good at reading people, which is essentially why he keeps on insisting people try his choice of beverage for them. As he's explaining, he prepares a special cup of coffee for her and hands it to her. She tries it and claims that it's nothing special, however, as she exits the coffee she can't help but appreciate the decadent flavor. Eric and Sarah become more serious as time goes by, and she finally introduces him to her family. Although they already love the fact that their daughter is dating a doctor, they start liking him even more after meeting him. They enjoy lunch in the backyard with her family when Sarah's father gets caught on fire from the grill. Naturally, everyone starts panicking, but being the true hero he is, Eric jumps to save him. He gets the apron off Sarah's father without burning himself and puts out the fire with a fire extinguisher. Luckily, they have a doctor among them, but they're left with no food to eat as the meat is now burnt. Eric saves the day once again as he offers to make a pasta dish. Shortly, he serves the delicious pasta to them, and the whole family can't stop gushing about him. Wanting an honest opinion about Eric, Sarah asks her sister who ends up telling her everything the other member would. They simply love him. Walking back outside, Sarah spots Fred with a girl and does everything not to get seen. Unfortunately for her, Fred spots her and begins calling out to her, loudly. Having no choice, Sarah walks up to them with Chloe by her side. Seeing him eat a burger sets her off, but he justifies himself by claiming to do one thing that brings him satisfaction each day. He introduces the girl sitting next to him, and she doesn't seem to be the sharpest. Already feeling awkward, Sarah tries leaving but Chloe seems to be enjoying Fred's jokes. She tries staying for dessert, but Sarah reminds her that it's a lot of calories. Continuing with her tight scheduled life, Sarah gets a duty from Eric. She has to take care of Shakespeare while he's on a business trip. Assuring him that she's going to be fine, she soon regrets it, as Shakespeare doesn't let her sleep. In the morning, she heads to the coffee shop, where they're giving out free coffee for everyone celebrating their birthday that day. She lets him know that it's her birthday, half-heartedly, so he wishes her a happy birthday. Naturally curious, he asks about her plans with Eric, and she reveals that he's not in town. He gets confused as to why her boyfriend is not with her on her birthday, as it is unacceptable in his eyes. But he doesn't say anything further to upset her. However, he comes up with the most brilliant idea. In the evening, Sarah gets a call from an unfamiliar number. Answering, she realizes that it's Fred and wonders how he got her number. He lets her know that they have it in the cafe, but what's more important is that he invites her to the cafe. She is hesitant, but he ends up changing her mind. Arriving at the cafe, Sarah is surprised by everyone at the cafe wishing her a happy birthday. Not only that, they bring out candles for her to blow, fulfilling the birthday experience. They have fun, dance, and celebrate Sarah. In the end, Sarah and Fred stay to clean up, so she takes the chance to thank him for the wonderful party. Switching the topic and letting the curiosity get to her, she asks him what his goals in life are. He answers her truthfully, revealing that he's already doing what he wants, but it'll be better if he becomes the best barista in town. 
She struggles to understand his idea of a perfect career, so he asks her what her goals are, trying to convince herself that she loves working in HR. She fails and admits that she wants to become an illustrator. Fred is confused as he never took her as the creative type, so she decides to show him some of her work. Looking through the pages, all he sees is neat drawing, without any creative liberty. It's not bad, and he understands that it's her character, so he doesn't say anything specific. After cleaning up, Fred closes the shop and walks her to her car. Before getting to it, he asks when Eric will be back, so she lets him know that it'll be a couple of days before he returns. Feeling rebellious, Fred invites her on a date the following evening. There's something that's pulling Sarah to him, but because he's the complete opposite of what she's looking for, she can't seem to open up to the idea of being with him, not wanting to reject him, but also unsure of whether she wants to give him a chance. She asks to sleep on it, and gives him the answer the following morning. He agrees, not losing hope at all. The following day, Sarah interviews a girl for an assistant position that looks nothing like the typical assistant. However, she seems to be the perfect fit, so Sarah promises to call her back. She's given the girl a chance, which gives her the idea that she should give Fred one as well. Picking up the phone, she calls him, and luckily he agrees. In the evening, he takes her to a bar she wouldn't usually be seen at, and she ends up enjoying it. Instead of the usual champagne, she has a zombie cocktail that gets her drunk. Fred's silly nature and the cocktail relax Sarah, so much so that she does karaoke with him. But that's not all. After an amazing time at the bar, they head outside where Fred spots a burger stand. He gets burgers for both of them, and although she doesn't eat meat, she ends up devouring a smashed patty. Late into the night, Fred drives her back home and she seems to have passed out on his shoulder. Arriving in front of her house, she wakes up embarrassed but he assures her that she's been a gentleman the whole night. She heads inside but something tells her to run to the board. Contemplating whether to put Fred on the board or not, she ends up falling asleep on the floor. A phone call wakes her up, and it's Eric driving to the jungle, only to let her know that he'll be home in four to five days. Even though she's at work, she can't help but think about Fred. Searching up some barista competitions, she gets interrupted by her boss coming in. He starts going on about the new assistant and how unusual looking she is, but he ends up saying it positively. He loves the change and the fact that she doesn't look like a typical assistant, which surprises Sarah. She didn't know her boss was like that, so she took the chance to ask him to review her drawings. He's skeptical as he knows that she's great in HR, but she lets him know that drawing is her creative passion. He takes the drawings and promises to get back to her. On her way back home, she stops by the coffee shop to let Fred know about the competition, only to be interrupted by his new drink for her. He doesn't want to give her the old order as it doesn't fit her new vibe, so he makes her try the new one. Expectedly, she loves it, but it's the competition she's there for. Taking the paper out of her bag, she hands it to him, but he claims that he doesn't need to go, because he's already the best. Annoyed by his arrogance, she snatches the paper out of his hand and assures him that he doesn't need the $10,000 reward. Hearing the prize, he chases after her and ends up agreeing to participate if she helps him with the writing. The Fred effect seems to be working on her as we see her back at the bar with Eric. He comes from the same world as her, so naturally, he's surprised that she even knows of the bar. Sarah tells him that she knows it through a friend, which is when Fred shows up with a new girl on his arm. He introduces her and invites all to the dance floor. Eric agrees, but he doesn't seem to know how to dance. Seeing Fred break it down on the dance floor, he apologizes for not being like him, but tries to give himself a chance in the end. He asks the DJ to change the song, and as he does, Eric becomes a new person. Soon, the dance floor is on fire as Eric and Fred go move for move. Sarah watches in shock with her mouth open as the man turns into an unrecognizable beast. The surprises don't stop as Eric continues to be the best boyfriend in the world. On their way to dinner, he blindfolds Sarah so when they arrive she is surprised, and surprised she gets, as she sees a dimly lit dinner by the river with a violinist playing. They sit down all excited and she thanks him for the grand surprise, but he lets her know that the surprise hasn't come yet. Taking out a small velvet box, he opens it up only to reveal his grandmother's ring. Getting up, he kneels in front of her as he asks her to be his wife. Sarah is shocked, and she doesn't know what to say, but we get to find out soon. She shares the news with her family first, who couldn't be more excited for her. They ask about the date, and the specifics of the venue, but Sarah reveals that she hasn't given him an answer yet. They look at her like she's crazy, not supporting her decision because Eric is the best guy there could ever be. Chloe whispers in her ear, 
letting her know that she can take as much time as she wants because it's not about finding a great guy, it's about finding the one. Sarah thanks her for understanding, and Chloe advises her to listen to the Lord. Sarah follows the usual routine thinking that it would be a casual morning but things are about to go south soon. Walking into the cafe she engages in a flirty conversation with Fred, however they get interrupted by Eric joining them. He asks Sarah whether she's shared wonderful news with Fred, but she doesn't say anything. So, he takes the liberty of sharing the news, making Fred's stomach drop. Eric does mention that she hasn't said yes yet, but Fred congratulates them regardless. He orders coffee, but Fred points him to the other barista as he heads back to get a hold of himself. Sarah stays quiet and doesn't react in any way. Instead, she heads to work where another surprise awaits her. Although her drawings are nice, her boss doesn't think they're suitable because they're too perfect. Wanting to make things right, Sarah heads to the cafe after work to try to make amends with Fred. He assures her that all is well and that he's not mad, which makes it easier for her. As she's explaining the situation, she accidentally pushes the packets of sugar on the counter, so she bends down to pick them up. Her bag falls in the process, and something seems to fall out of it. Fred bends to help her, and their looks suddenly meet. Tension rises as they stare into each other's eyes, and soon both of them lean in. Sarah realizes what she's about to do, so she leans back and quickly runs out of the shop embarrassed. Fred returns to the counter but he sees a piece of paper on the floor. He picks it up and opens it to read it. Unfortunately it's Sarah's list and it makes him believe the worst. Sarah gets home, but shortly after she enters the house, she hears a knock on the door. Eric stands in front of her with a hurt expression. He asks her to admit that she almost kissed him, but she claims that such a thing never happened. Struggling to understand why she can't fall in love with a guy like him, he pulls out the list from his pocket and asks for an explanation. Sarah tries justifying herself by claiming to have made the list long ago. Besides, she sees no wrong in having a list, but he reminds her that no one makes a list while trying to find a partner. Having had enough, she admits that she's tired of getting hurt and that the list was made so she avoids wasting her time on bad guys. Fred can't believe that she's jumping into marriage with Eric just because he ticks all the boxes, but she assures him that she is not jumping into a marriage and that she loves Eric. He sees right through her, so he lets her know that she's just like her drawings, tight, neat, and unwilling to take any risks. After Fred's reality check, Sarah calls Chloe and tells her all about it. To settle the dilemma, Chloe asks her to compare Fred and Eric so she knows who she really wants. Sarah is hesitant at first, but she agrees to make the list. In the end, she chooses Eric as he has more qualities than him, which is why she ends up saying yes to his proposal. Knowing that she's found the one, Sarah takes off all of her plans and lists and replaces them with a wedding wish list. Fred gets a chance at a fresh start as well. We see him opening the invitation for the contest, but looking rather skeptical about joining it. She slowly returns to her former self, the one Eric fell in love with. Unsurprisingly, Fred reads through her so he makes her the drink she never got from him, her old order. She asks about the coffee he used to make her, but he lets her know that she gives off a boring vibe now and that the coffee suits her. Finding his behavior ridiculous, she tries apologizing again, but he asks whether she's shown the list to Eric. Sarah keeps quiet, and that's how he realizes that she hasn't. It gets Sarah thinking, so when Eric tells her that he's booked a venue for them to get married in two months, she decides to let him know about the list. Surprisingly, instead of being mad, Eric tells her that he finds the list cute and that he's flattered for being the one with the most checked boxes. A couple of days later, we see the young couple at the venue ready to pick out the specifics. They begin with the menu and Eric insists that there's no red meat. Surprisingly, Sarah suggests they put red meat on the menu for the people who eat it. Eric agrees, so they go on to centerpieces. Feeling ambitious, she pulls out her sketches, but everyone agrees that they're too simple. The organizer and Eric start talking among themselves, like Eric is the only one getting married. Sarah panics, unable to say anything they'll like. Soon, she begins to feel a shortness of breath and eventually passes out. Luckily, her soon-to-be husband is a doctor, so he knows the staff at the hospital. She gets told that she has commitment anxiety, but she doesn't agree. In the evening, Sarah uses her free time to reflect and to try something new. She decides to draw but in a less neat style, and she ends up being good at it. The following morning at work, she checks the barista competition only to see that Fred's made the list. Wanting to congratulate him in person, she heads to the coffee where she meets grumpy Fred. He lets her know that he's not participating, but something in her belief in him makes him change his decision. For weeks, Fred practices while Sarah is occupied with wedding stuff. They grow apart and focus on their things, but deep down they still think about each other. 
On the day of the barista competition, we see Sarah and Eric at a wedding venue despite not being invited. They sit down nonchalantly, but Eric's phone rings, and he gets asked to return to the hospital. Sarah stays, listening to the bride and groom exchange wedding vows, and realizing that they love each other regardless of their differences. After the wedding, she heads straight to the hospital to clear some things with Eric. While the lovebirds are having trouble in paradise, Fred seems to be doing great as he passes to the finale after presenting his espresso shots. Sarah finally finds Eric and decides to tell him the truth. She's not happy like the bride, so she doesn't feel like he's the person for her. Luckily, he understands and doesn't try to force her into a relationship, so they hug it out for the last time. After her conversation with Eric, Sarah drives straight to the barista competition. Fred has to make a specialty drink of an original recipe, but gets lost for a second. He sees Sarah in the audience and decides to make the drink he used to make for her. The judges get to taste the drinks and make a decision. Fred ends up winning first place with an espresso race time of 10 minutes and 51 seconds, and a specialty drink score of 10. After giving him all of his awards, they give Fred a chance to say something. He thanks the judges but most importantly, he thanks Sarah for being his biggest inspiration when it comes to coffee. They sit together after the ceremony when she decides to tell him that she's not getting married. She's realized that she wants something different, and that's him. Looking at her with such passion, he admits to liking her as well. Leaning in, they soon share a passionate kiss, marking the new beginning.